I'm joined now by a three-time Super Bowl champion who didn't even play football until college. Nate Ebner, I understand rugby is your first love in terms of sport. I got to know, how would you describe the biggest difference between rugby and football? You know, ultimately, you're trying to move the ball forward in both games, but you do it differently. In rugby, you got to pass backwards and run it forward, whereas football, you know, there's a line of scrimmage and it's set and receivers can run down field and you can pass the ball forward, obviously. And from a flow standpoint, uh, rugby is a lot more similar to basketball, in my opinion, so. That's interesting. That is an interesting comparison. And I mean, I know for you, rugby came first. You were an all-American rugby player at Ohio State and you walked on to the football team in your junior year. I'm curious how you made that transition. Well, it was a lot of, a lot of work, um, but you know, to make that decision mentally, um, you know, I was played in a couple junior World Cups leading up to that point. As you said, I was a uh, All-American as a freshman at Ohio State, and um, I got to the point where the junior World Cups were kind of done for me at, as an age grade thing, and I was kind of in limbo between playing professional rugby and playing for the national team, and, and I was just at Ohio State playing club rugby. You know, my senior year uh, in high school, I wanted to play football. I chose not to. And uh, my high school team won the Division One state championship. Not being a part of that was something that I thought about and where I was in a standstill with rugby. You know, I'm at Ohio State, one of the biggest football schools in the, in the country, in the world. And I just had that hunger to do it. And I decided I, I would go for it. And I had a conversation with, with my dad and uh, said, you know, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. And, you mentioned a conversation you had with your dad in making that transition. I understand your dad had a huge influence, especially in your athletic career before his untimely death. And I know that you wrote a book that is coming out very soon called Finish Strong about that relationship. What can you tell me about that conversation and about his role in shaping you as, as an athlete and a man? Our relationship was, you know, I'd put it up against any father-son relationship out there. We were extremely close and uh, he was the best friend to me at that point. Um, so, you know, he was a big part of all my decision-making processes and, um, you know, it was like he was along on the ride with me. So, you know, to, to, to leave that rugby career behind to, to chase a dream, I mean, that was, you know, that was saying a lot when I had done so much to build that rugby career. So, um, you know, we had that conversation, but it, it weighed heavy on my heart and he heard me out, but that was, uh, you know, that was the last thing we spoke about. The next day uh, was when, you know, he had the incident at the, at the junkyard and then he passed. So having had that conversation with him and his blessing and, you know, I felt convicted that I needed to make that a reality. I have to imagine playing for Team USA Rugby Sevens in the 2016 Olympics would have been something that he would have smiled at. It was the first ever inclusion of Rugby Sevens at the Olympic Games. What do you remember most about that experience in Rio? It was a fan fantastic, amazing experience. I'd say the opening ceremony was something that hit me pretty hard as an American. You know, you're representing something so much bigger than yourself and you're part of something great that the rest of the world recognizes. Well, another Olympic year is upon us, another opportunity. Are you pursuing that opportunity again? Will you be joining Team USA again? Well, let's hope so. Um, you know, this is really realistically probably a, a last shot for me. So it's like, uh, you know, now or never type of deal. And again, that conviction to want to go for it. You know, they only take 12 guys and they're all, you know, the team's full of professional players, some of the best in the world. And, you know, if, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But at the end of the day, um, I'm going to give it my all. and. You know, I'll, I'll make it or I won't, but I'll tell you, I'll be able to sleep at night knowing I tried and and it won't be for lack of effort. So I hope we can do it. Whether I'm there or not, I I just want that for rugby in this country uh, to, to win a medal, what that would do for the sport. Um, that would be fantastic. And regardless if I was there, I mean, obviously being there would be would be awesome too, so. <laughs> it would be pretty rad either way. Um, but Nate, good luck with everything with this Team USA Rugby Pursuit with the impending book, Finish Strong, which is on bookshelves in May of 2021, and the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. And we're looking forward to having you back on the football field this fall for Giants football. Thanks so much for taking the time today. Yeah, thanks for having me.